Flutter Flow versus Bubble. We're gonna look at key features, the pricing, and which platform I would choose. First up, what is Flutter Flow? Flutter Flow is a platform where you can build applications very quickly. And if you're looking to build native mobile apps, this is a great solution for you. What is Bubble? Bubble is a full stack, no code platform. So you can pretty much build anything with Bubble within reason. Let's talk about some of the key features of both platforms. With Flutterflow, again, I would say one of the standout things about Flutterflow is if you're trying to have a great mobile experience, this is where Flutterflow excels. If you're trying to create a native experience, a native app experience, you can be doing this with Flutterflow. So if we're looking for different features where you can collaborate with different team members, be able to work on the application, bring in APIs, all of these different things you can do, but also you have the basics of animation, push notifications, you can have light and dark mode, and chat and group chat. The other thing I'll mention is with Flutterflow, they have a lot of different, they have something called flows inside of the, the platform. So if I'm trying to build a user onboarding experience, they do a lot of the heavy lifting for me because I can just drag, basically bring in that kind of onboarding into my project in just a few clicks. Also, Flutterflow continues to advance their AI gen. So this allows you to have AI, AI generation based on what you're trying to do. If you're trying to have assistant, assistance when you're building the front end, where you're asking it to go from text to app, it will allow you to build different pages very quickly. Not only that, and there are great examples of this, including sign-in pages, home pages, membership pages if you want, but also if you're trying to generate a backend where your application needs to save the data to make your application smart, it also helps that helps with that as well. If you're trying to work on a certain color scheme and you might just not have a knack for that and you just need something to all look great, you can ask it to do that as well. And if you're going to want to put in different custom code, it has a code co-pilot. So you can use that to assist you to write code if necessary for your application. Again, Flutterflow, I would say, leans more on the low code side. So you can do tons of things with just no code, but if you need to have very custom things, you can be using um, custom code in Flutterflow as well. With Bubble, there are so many different things you can do with Bubble. It's really hard to look at key features because there are so many different use cases with Bubble. If you're trying to create a marketplace, if you're trying to create an internal tool, if you're trying to do uh, create a Chrome extension or a Shopify application app, you can do those things with Bubble. So some of the things that I would look at with Bubble is what are you trying to create? And then that will allow you to see the different use cases that Bubble can do for you. In the comment section down below, what kind of application are you trying to create? When we're looking at Bubble with some of the features, it does allow you to design using no code. So visually you can be building out what you're looking for, but with Bubble, again, there are so many things you can do with it. It's really starting with a blank canvas and then you're making it your own. So when you're thinking about what, what platform you need to look at, it really depends on your use case and what's the functionality that you're looking for. Along with having all these different things where you can be building out visually, you can be having your own database in Bubble, also, too, if you're looking for very specific plugins for different things that you're going to be doing uh, or need with Bubble, you can do this as well. And I think one of the standout things is the communities, uh, what you can be doing with Bubble. So now that we looked at the key features of the two, let's talk about pricing, okay? With Flutterflow, you can start for free. You can start for free and you can have the visual application builder. You can have hundreds of page and component templates, so you can start very quickly with things already designed for you. You can build mobile, web, and desktop apps. You can have API and data integration, and you can have web publishing. So this allows you to get started very quickly 
when you're going to be building out your application. If we are going across, we can also see a couple different options if we're going to be going for the standard or the pro plan. What I would focus in on the standard and the pro plan is what kind of features do you need? So for the standard, you can download your code. So if you wanna leave, that's one of the benefits of Flutterflow. If you want to take your project, take all of the code and leave, you can do that with Flutterflow. You can have the APK downloads, you can have a custom web, um, a custom domain web publishing. So that way you can have your own domain name. So your branding is gonna be in full effect and they can visit your website and the branding will be under your custom domain. For the pro plan, this really stands out if you're trying to deploy it to the app or Google app stores. That's where it's gonna be at $70. You can have a source repository integration, one-click localization, GitHub integration. So if you're working with a lot of devs and you're doing a lot of custom work, I think this is perfect at that price point. And if you're trying to go to the App Store. To note, when you're going to the App Store, you need to also consider how much they take a percentage of every sale that you make. But also you can do tons of testing, even under the free plan, to test if your audience likes your application if they're going to be using it even before you decide to launch it. And that way you can have a profitable and scalable business with using something like Flutterflow than just thinking, okay, once I put it on the app store, I'm gonna make tons of money. Not so, there's tons of strategies. And if you wanna hear about how past clients or students have been able to do that, or just see use cases of Flutterflow clients being able to do that, let me know in the, uh, in the um, comment section or chat down below and we'll be able to go through examples. So that's $70. Then the Teams plan, so that's $70 per user, that's at 70. You can have real-time collaboration, project level access control, so if different ones need only access in different ways, seven-day audit logs and centralized billing. So that really helps if you're gonna be scaling and needing a team, there's, there's an option for you as well. So that's the breakdown. And if you wanna see more details of all the different things that can and cannot do on the plans, you can look at the details of the features for each plan as well. Now let's take a look at the pricing for Bubble. Bubble has a couple different pricing structures, but we're gonna focus first on the free plan. There's a free plan, you can have a development version, API connector, component library, one app editor, 50K workload units per month, six hours of server logs. And we have this 50K, it says plenty of workload to build and explore before launching your project, okay? So that's for free. Now, what do we notice from the free plan what's different than the starter? The starter says best for launching your app and testing. Great for MVPs and simple tools with small to moderate user bases. So to get a live app, you're gonna to have to go with the starter plan at 29, right? And with that live app, then you can have a custom domain, reoccurring workflows, basic version control, 175K workload units, and two-day server logs, okay? So that's at the starter plan. So remember, the free plan, you can get started, you can kind of test out your project that's under construction, and then when you push live, you're still gonna, you're gonna have to start paying. So you can go into the experiment, see what's going on here, and then go into starter. Now, another part, elephant in the room, if people are looking at, well, what about the workload? What does that mean? Over the last year, when they, when Bubble changed the pricing, what they did, all those things, there are tons of videos that you can search for on YouTube to get into the weeds of what a workload is, what kind of apps that are going to be needed or can only run on the growth plan or on the, on larger plans, but simple to say that depending on how much traffic or what you're doing with the application, you're going to have to scale up and pay more using Bubble now in 2024. That's just the way it is. Does it affect everyone? No. Does it affect larger or mid-sized businesses? Yeah, it can, depending on the workload and what's going on. But I would say look at dedicated Bubble channels to look at what they've done or workarounds, but that that's where we're at. If we're looking at growth, it says best for growing your user base. We have two app editors. We can have premium version control, two-factor authentication, 10 custom branches, 
and that means divide and conquer your project by working in multiple branches, okay? 250K workload units per month, 14 day server logs. That's at 119 a month. And then at the team level, what are we getting at? We're getting more team, more application, more editors for the application. We can have five app editors, sub apps, 25 custom branches, 500K workload units per month, and then 20 days of server log. So that's the breakdown of the pricing for Bubble. And then when we look at Flutterflow. So looking at the two options, looking at Bubble and Flutterflow, which one I would choose? I would go with Flutterflow, but it depends. The reason I say that is it really depends on what you're trying to build. Flutterflow isn't perfect for every single project. I'm not claiming that it is. But if I'm looking at which one I would choose long term, depending on the project, I would go with Flutterflow. Why is that? Number one, I like all the things that they're building. Their team is moving very quickly. The new AI gen has been very helpful to be able to scale and to be able to generate my pages quicker that I need for my students or myself. And also, I don't like to be locked into a platform. If I feel the need that I want to download the code and leave, I can do that. I think that's a huge plus. Only a few no-code platforms really allow you to do that. And that's a big feature. That is Flutterflow and WeWeb. The reason Flutterflow is allowing or able to do that, you're building on Flutter, which is the language. So you can then just download the Flutter code and then leave if you want to. I will say, I, I don't really have a need to leave right now because all of the great things that they keep building, I'm going to be staying in the ecosystem for a while. But that's something that I want to be able to have control over. And looking at other no-code platforms in the past that might have had to close shop, I don't want that risk of my business if something were to happen. Now, Bubble, I will say, has been around for a long time. Do I think that they're going to fold or anything like that? Not really. But what I do, what I'm not thrilled about is the pricing changes over time. You know that this channel, we've been talking about Bubble for over four years. I've used Bubble probably since probably 2018, something like that. So they're, I've, I've seen their pricing change and I've seen what they've done. I have tons of friends that love Bubble and they're not going to go anywhere but it depends on what you're trying to build. And if you're trying to simply just buy a template and think you're gonna use Bubble, it's not gonna go very well. There are a lot of intricacies or intricate things that you need to do with Bubble, but I think it's a great, it's a great platform depending on what you're trying to build. And again, that's why I was saying in the comment section, let me know what you're trying to build. Regarding the workloads, the units, all those things, again, I have seen them try to do this multiple times, but we also realized, guess what? When you're doing VC funding, because they have they have venture capitalists that invested in Bubble a few years ago, you have other masters to serve. So they do need to be profitable. So prices do need to change. And their focus is not their focus is less about hobbyists and ones that are just tinkerers and more businesses. That's how they're going to make more money based off the pricing tier and everything like that. So those are just things to consider. In the comment section down below, let me know what you're deciding. Are you switching from Bubble? Are you thinking about switching from Flutterflow to Bubble? Let me know. And if you want to see more videos like this, let me know in the comment section down below. And if you want to try out Flutterflow for the complete beginner, check out this next video that's somewhere hovering.